People in our community have been accused of selling out for financial gain, political advantages, and even for something as simple as social media clout. Woohoo! Tonight, the business of being Black are sellouts. And who better to have this spirited conversation with than guests that I personally enjoy? Please welcome author and activist, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson. Hi, Reverend Peterson. How you doing? Hi, How you Tammy? All is well. Thanks for having me on. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, Dr. Umar Johnson with his, is with us. Dr. Umar, hey. Good evening, Queen. Glad to be with you. And the president of the African History Network, Michael Emotep. Hi, Michael. How are you tonight? How are you doing, Miss Tammy Mack? Thanks for I'm, having me back. I'm doing absolutely wonderful. And it's uh, lovely to see your face on this show. So thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Why is the question I start with on the Tammy Mack Show every night? And tonight is no different. Why should black people care if they're a sellout or not? I'll give it to you first, Michael. Uh, why should black people, are you talking about the individual person? Why should is they the, care? The individual person or black people as in the community? Well, if we, if we take the community first, the collective, uh, a person who's a sellout uh, will purposely do things that are detrimental to the African-American community for personal gain, financial position, what have you, from, from my basic understanding of, of sellouts. So uh, I think, uh, and it could, this can be in various forms, so the community has to be concerned because of the damage, the harm that it can do to the collective, to the community. Uh, the individual um, should be concerned because of, one, they are part of a collective. It's not just this individualism that like really became popular in the 1980s here in the U.S. is rugged individualism. You're part of a collective. You're part of a whole. You're part of an African village, whether you realize it or not. So uh, uh, I think you have to be concerned about what you contribute to the community, what you contribute to society, what type of energy also you put out into the universe. And then there's a universal law called karma. What goes around comes around. Yeah. All right. Uh, Reverend Jesse, why should black people care about the word sellout? Well, um, in reality, there is no such thing as sellout. Our battle is a spiritual battle. It's a warfare between good and evil. And when the black people, most black people today are in a fallen state. They don't know God. They don't have love. They come from screwed up families, so they're very angry. And in their state of anger, they're very judgmental because they have, a, they have a big pride about them, which is the nature of Satan. And so when other Blacks overcome that fallen state and return to what is right and love what is right and love their God as love God with all their heart, soul, and might and their neighbor as themselves, the Blacks who are in a fallen state cannot handle that because they're very judgmental. And what they try to do in their state of evil they try to keep other black men and women down because they hate good. And if you notice, Tammy, most black people today don't believe in God. Most of them are evil and they hate good. And that's what the primary state is. So they will blame somebody else for their problems rather than facing them themselves. And you can always tell a man or a woman who is in a fallen state, they blame everybody else for their failures. And most black people are doing that today. Dr. Omar. Sell out. I would say that when you deal with the concept of the sellout, you have to deal with it within the context of post-traumatic slavery disease. I always say that the Negro is one of the greatest creations of the modern era because the Negro is the only organism that will work against its own best interests without being paid to do so. And when we deal with the politics of selling out, we have to recognize that selling out is extremely accepted in the black community because the black community has never created a code of conduct for its members. Every other culture, although they are not monolithic, they do not live in a utopia, but they do have a code of conduct. We have never created such a code in the modern era. And because we haven't created a code, a lot of people, can ignore the accusation that they have sold out because every person has their own definition, which is based on their own personal commitment 
to the black community. So for example, to Dr. Umar Johnson, if you date outside of your race, you're a sellout because protecting and maintaining the traditional black family, in my opinion, is something that all of us should be in the business of doing. But for the next person, dating outside of your race may be accepted. Some people would see a black person worshiping a image of Jesus as a white man as clearly being indicative of selling out. But someone else would say, there's nothing wrong with working with worshiping Jesus in the image of your oppressor. And so we have different levels of commitment mm -hmm. to the black community. And those different levels of commitment, Tammy, dictate how high of a bar we set for one another. So we don't have a code. We don't black, the black community has not designated a code uh, that keeps us uh, I guess not selling out. Speaking of sellout, let's 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 make sure that we're working on the same definition of a sellout here. So, uh, Doc, uh, Reverend Jesse, you say that there's no such thing as a sellout, but you yeah. can admit that uh, the word sellout does exist and that it is used, right? Yeah, it, it is used just like the word racism. We all know that there's no such thing as racism. It's a word that made up to deceive the blind. Uh, and so when they use the word sellout, it's meant to divide and conquer. But if you have not, if you're not in a fallen state, meaning that Satan is not your daddy, you can see the game that's being played. Like Dr. Umar just said, he just spoke as a blind man. He has no idea what he's talking about because there's no such thing as slavery uh, syndrome or whatever he said. Our battle is a spiritual battle. It's either right or wrong, good or evil. And in the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, men knew that and they led their wives and children in the right way to go. And they did have a conduct of morality. They treated everyone they would like uh, in the way that they would like to be treated, never mind the color. They taught their children how to work and be responsible and not blame and whine. And they didn't put it out there as though they couldn't make it. Uh, Dr. Umar Johnson just well, made I don't up think words. We should, I don't, I don't, doc, uh, Reverend, Reverend, Reverend Jesse, I don't think we should uh, uh, <laughs> suggest that one person knows more than the other in a sense of you saying you know it all and uh, anyone else on the panel knows less. That's a little unfair. Yeah, well, I may not know my flowers, but I know Dr. Umar Johnson is blind and that he's wrong. And he doesn't know God. So he's telling people's words, fancy words, in order to deceive them. If you knew that our battle is a battle between good or evil, then you wouldn't make up words in order to see, to deceive. You would tell the truth and hope that those who are blind may wake up and see the right way to go. I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama uh, under the Jim Crow law. And back then, black there people- there were no slaves on that plantation? Uh, well, yeah, they had, you know, my, as a matter of fact, my grandparents, grandparents, parents ran the plantation and, but they weren't slaves when I was growing up. And the point is black people had a sense of morality then, and they loved what was right. They worked hard. They loved their country. They didn't blame because the men were leading the way. Hold that thought, now, Reverend Jesse. Now the black men saw hold like women. Thought. Hold that thought, Reverend Jesse. Dr. Omar, uh, go ahead. I don't want him to uh, uh, bring your name up and not allow you to respond. It's okay. I, I, I had been on uh, Reverend Jesse's show before, and uh, they have been trying diligently to have me come back. And one of the reasons I did not return to the show is because I believe that Jesse Lee Peterson knows better. In fact, he would be a textbook definition of a sellout because he is the type of Black man who will bend over backwards to absolve the American white power structure of any responsibility for what happens to Black people. And like many sellouts, they always ignore or they try to uh, uh, retreat away from acknowledging the role that systemic racism plays in the life of Black people. Racism is not only about the individual mistreatment of Black people, it is about the systemic mistreatment of black people. See, racism is a system that all white people participate in to disadvantage all members of another group. 
So you don't opt in, you don't opt out. And members of the target group don't opt in or opt out. But what they can do, as Jesse Lee Peterson has so effectively done in his career, is they can identify with the power structure. They can identify with white racism and they can carve out a niche for themselves by defending the racism that is attacking black people as opposed to defending black people against that racism. A black man in America who does not stand up for his people and in turn aligns himself with the structure that is eating away at the opportunities of black people can go very far in this country. Senator Tim Scott is an example. Jesse Lee Peterson is an example. And we will continue to create these types of personalities, Sister Tammy, if we don't come up with the code and if the black community doesn't start holding its members accountable for dysfunctional behavior. We're going to take yeah, a quick break that... and come right back on the Tammy McLeod Show on Fox Soul. Six, seven months ago, we was out here fighting for our lives, and six months, everybody forgot about that. Fox Soul presents mainstream news they don't do right by us worth a conversation with jeezy people like yourself keep people engaged part of what i'm trying to do is like define the narrative before the media and before the police get to it every wednesday people need to understand like no this is something we should be furious about right. on fox soul i feel like like her heartbeat is like same speed as mine. And I think we have this like deep connection, this heart connection in her heart that there's, there's room for me and mom. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. It's a sensory thing. It's a thing with Asperger's. She's really good with Anya. I've seen adults react to my daughter when she has meltdowns, like she's from a different planet and this little animal just sat next to my child and was just like, you know, it's going to be cool. She's my superhero. The jacket kid. When we adopted Lucky, we discovered all the wonderful things that make her unique. Lucky's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly she's pure love. Let's welcome Mr. Trackstar himself, Mooski, into the mix. What's good, hey, man? Mooski. Yo, what's good? Fox Soul presents The Mix. My homeboys had to sell me on the song. I had another song that I wanted to drop. They were like, nah, bro, you got to drop Track Star, bro. I played it for so-and-so. And everybody just keeps saying that, like, this is a song. Every Tuesday night. There wasn't a female who you was dealing with who you was like, you know what? I'm about to write this because she pissed me off. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> on Fox Soul. So... Welcome back to the Tammy Mac Late Show on Fox Soul. Tonight, the business of being black are sellouts. Are you a sellout? Is there such thing as a sellout? Hmm, let's go to the chat and find out what they're saying. Maya Mugahi says, this panel is lit. Hakai says, queen, queen. Uh, Joy says, hey, y'all, I'm sorry. I got consumed at work, but I'm here now and happy to be. Uh, Incog says, uh-oh, Dr. Umar Johnson, it's about to be lit tonight. And then, uh, oh, hold on here, hold on here. Where are we? Uh, 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 oh, Don Morris says, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. Uh, that's how it's written. That's how I'm saying it. Uh, and then uh, our soulmate says, All your skin folk ain't your kin folk. And then Keep Me Lovely says, Imagine asking a white person, why should you care about this word? Hashtag not for sale. Hmm, um, that's a good question. And if a white person were on my panel, they'd be asked the same question because that's the question I start every show with every night. Why should black people care? Now the answers are up to you. Perhaps black people shouldn't care. Perhaps I shouldn't be asking black people. The answer is all up to you. I simply ask the questions. I am the host and moderator, but thank you for that. I'll get a white person on the show and ask them. Joy says, there are really strong words. These are really strong words. And then, um, 
Let's see. Okay. We yep. Ursula O says it is on and popping tonight on the Tammy Mac show. Uh, rising the 80s, or I sing the 80s. I sing the 80s says Reverend Jesse is a walking contradiction. We're gonna let you respond to that in a minute, Reverend Jesse. But I want to go to Michael here. Uh, Michael, according yes. to Harvard law professor and author Randall L. Kennedy, the term sellout refers to black people who knowingly or with gross negligence act against the interests of blacks as a whole. Do you believe that those people exist? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, they exist. I was reading some of uh, Randall Kennedy's work earlier today. Yeah, absolutely, they exist. That's what I was talking about. Those who knowingly, there's a difference between somebody who makes a mistake and doesn't know better. You share information with them, they correct their behavior. There's a difference between that and people who actually knowingly do it to profit uh, economically or what have you, and they don't care about doing harm to uh, to African Americans, to 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 the community, what have you. So. Absolutely, it, it exists. Now, in this, the up now the other thing is, I think in this whole social media culture, okay, I think in this whole cancel culture also, I think I think sometimes, I think sometimes the term sellout may be used prematurely or something like that. Because we, we're in this whole cancel culture, a lot of times if somebody says the wrong thing, you just want to cancel them or what have you. Uh, so I, I think you're dealing with that, but dealing with that nuance as well. But, oh, yeah, absolutely, uh, uh, sellouts exist Through, throughout history. Uh, during slavery, after slavery, uh, absolutely sellouts exist. Why do you think the term is so loaded in the Black community? Well, I think, you know, Dr. Umar hit on something, and, uh, you know, I deal with things like this as well. Because of the history of slavery in this country, African Americans have, have largely been stripped of African history and culture, things like this. Uh, our culture... And two of my teachers, Dr. Leonard Jeffries and Professor James Small, and Dr. Umar knows who they are. Uh, they talk about how African history and culture gives us our foundation. It gives us our VIPs, our values, our interests, and our principles. And this gives us a cultural paradigm that we see reality through, but this gives us some type of code of conduct, as Dr. Umar was talking about. So when you deal with other ethnic groups in this country, for the most part, they have their history and culture intact to a certain extent, and this gives them that that code of conduct he was talking about that gives them that that gives them that uh that that foundation largely for us it's been taken away from us and and many of us you know in various ways been trying to take back reclaim certain aspects of it but we're operating we're, we're operating at a deficit you know mm -hmm. so um yeah you, so you, sellouts definitely exist uh, the Reverend Jesse, oh, we got soulmates in the chat for you. One from none says Jesse holds black people accountable. But Deja E says uh, Reverend Jesse claims folks don't know God, but he sounds the most judgmental and hypocritical than anybody. Uh, what do you what do you say to that? Uh, I guess that she's saying hypocritical in a sense of you say you were raised on a plantation or your your you know, your parents were raised on a plantation. But how can a plantation exist if there were no slaves so that in itself would be a kind of incongruent or hypocritical what do you say to that once upon a time there was um there were slaves in america that is not happening today and it wasn't happening when i was uh when i was growing up in alabama this idea that slavery is the cause of the lack of uh, morality for black people is insane it's just another sign of ill lot of an illogical mindset because when I was growing up, I lived, I, the bathroom was outdoors, you know, outside bathroom. I had to work the cotton fields and things like that. But it was the character of the man or the woman that counted. And when I was growing up, black people at that time were known to be men and women of character. Today, black people, not all, not all, not all, not all, but most are known to be men and women who lack character. The world know that black people that black people are suffering, not because of this phony idea of racism, uh, slavery, systemic racism and all that crap. They know that black people are immoral, that they come from failing parents and that they hate everybody and they have no love. But that's everybody not your story, it, is it, Reverend But they're Jesse? afraid to that's tell not, the blacks. That's not your story, is it, Reverend Jesse? Is that your story? No, because I was raised differently. I was raised to treat all in the way that I would like to be treated, to be fair and to be honest, because you're either children of God or children of Satan. 
and it has nothing to do with the color. And the children of God cannot hang out with the children of Satan because they have their, their, their hearts are wicked and they have illogical mindset. The two men that just spoke, it made no sense. But so I'd to, like for you to teach me. I want I, I, I to have a like logic. To, uh, are, Reverend Jesse, I would like for you to teach me for a moment here. Um, yes. Uh, uh, please break me away from tradition and what I've been taught in the white schools that I've attended uh, that suggest that there was this society in America that wouldn't allow white people and black people to drink from the water fountains. Did the white institutions I attend teach me that wrong or was that correct? I'm ready to learn from you. Well, as a matter of fact, when I was growing up, I remember the colors only signs and the whites only signs. But because most black people loved what was right, they loved God, they knew that all white people did not feel that way. It was primarily the white people who belonged to the Democratic Party, and they didn't want blacks to be a part of the Democratic Party. And so that's why the blacks started the Republican Party, because the blacks. So when we dealt with the for black only signs, for white only, it, it common sense said it wasn't everybody. It was those who serve evil. But it was majority and, of the white people. We can agree with that. No, right? it wasn't. It wasn't the majority of black people. It was a few. I said black majority people. of the white people. I'm sorry. It, well, let's get back on to sellouts, uh, Dr. Umar. Yes, uh, ma'am, and I would like to respond yes. to him if I may, sister. And it Tan. wasn't the majority of whites. Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. I want to clarify something when we talk about racism. Racism is not an individual personality fault. It doesn't exist, people. man. Racism is not about individual personality. Racism is about systemic injustice, systemic bias, systemic disproportionality, systemic discrimination. You do That's not dumb. opt out of, of you do not opt that out of racism. Dumb. All white people benefit from and participate in racism. So whether your ancestors owned black people or not is irrelevant. And the reason it is irrelevant, Sister Tammy, is because even if your ancestors didn't own black people, they worked at a job that was created because of the enslavement of black people. So there's no such thing as Slavery did not impact my family. Just like in today's America, all white people benefit from the mass incarceration of black people. They benefit from the miseducation of black children. They benefit from the police brutality against black people. So I want to make sure we are clear. What you're saying Racism is, is not you, about individual white people but what choosing you're saying to be black. Racism yeah. is about the system of racism That's a that lie. controls opportunities and resources, Sister Tammy. Racism is not about the attitude. It's about the control of resources and opportunities. Tammy, that is not true. That's, this is why we have to, uh, we must get to know ourselves so that we can overcome that fallen state. Dr. Umar is evil for putting out a lie like that because, or lies like that, because people are going to uh, believe well, in it. Well, let's refrain from calling people names. Uh, okay. But well, he's not telling the truth. We, we, we have to refrain, Sister Tammy, but at the same time, he is I evil. think it's important that we understand the difference between the Negro and the Coon. Sister Tammy, this is a very <laughs> important distinction that has to be made. The Negro the? is innocent in his <laughs> ignorance, Sister Tammy. As Brother Michael said earlier, some people make mistakes against the race <laughs> unknowingly. If you make a mistake against the race unknowingly, that was a Negro. Negroes are innocent. They think white people are more intelligent. They think Jesus is black because they haven't been taught any better. But a <laughs> coon knows that. <laughs> But the coon voluntarily identifies with his oppressor because there is an agenda that he's looking to get filled. And the sad thing about Jesse Lee Peterson is he is too old to be cooning at this point in his life. And the fact that he claims <laughs> to be a man of God doing the devil's work makes him a total hypocrite. But Tammy, you know what I, I just want to uh, add to that? To hear uh, Dr. Umar and the other man to speak this way That's Michael. is, is uh, Michael, sorry. To hear Michael and, and, and uh, Dr. Umar speak this way is abnormal for men. Normally men, when I was growing up, they had logical mindset. 
But today's black man has an ill locked into mindset because he thinks like a woman. He has not overcome the spirit of the woman and returned to the logical there mindset. There is nothing of the more father effeminate than a white he, man defending the white power like, He sounds like black they, people. There is nothing more effeminate than a black man defending that, the white power structure man, against talking. black people. Hey, why are you speaking? What? Hold on. Um, uh, you are politically effeminate, Jesse Lee logical Peterson. In their mind. You are politically and, and, and effeminate. And women are illogical you are in their politically mindset, right? Effeminate. Why are you screaming You are defending me? the white power structure Dang, hold against on. your own people hey. while you claim to be a man of God. Dang, you are on. a disgrace to your race, sir. You Dang, are a down. disgrace to your race. And and okay, so normally no, Dr. Umar, the man with the logical mindset would bring the women and children to a logical mindset to help them overcome. But now the black men, not all but most, they think like their mothers and grandmothers. So they all think just like women, and that's why you can't get it right. So because indicting order, racism makes a you a woman. God, and that order is God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, and woman over I'm children. Not interested in but to, I'm not interested in a religious interpretation black woman of racism. Is the same black woman is over the men. And it is a mistake to women. use religion to interpret a, political a, phenomena. They, that's why we're going to take a, a quick break and we'll come right back on the Tammy Mac show on Fox Soul. Let's take a quick break. We'll come right back. Wakey, wakey, John. That a boy. What the hell? Like I said, I'm making a film. Fox Souls Screening Room, hosted by Vivica A. Fox. Pitch Girl is my revenge-themed spaghetti western-style film with a black rotation influence to it. <laughs> I love women on screen. I love women being, you know, the forefront of it. Featuring the next wave of black filmmakers. Here's a man struggling to pay his bills, to be successful, and to achieve the American dream. They see someone like me behind the counter, their first impression is that I work for someone else. We wanted to recognize the subtle racisms. That way you can start to combat the real issue of racism. You gotta realize that it's there. A black man with a liquor store in Koreatown. <laughs> Ain't that something? Streaming Thursday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on Fox Soul. Stay strong, my brother. She pops up at my birthday party, and I'm like, girl, I've been looking for you, and all I had to do was throw a birthday party. I was oh. there, right? I, I came. Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. You came with a mutual friend, Sergi Baca. I've known him for a very long time. We have a friendship. Every Friday. Don't you be looking at him like, damn, you are a tall thing of her. She's, I would climb you like a monkey at the zoo. You but are him crazy. Hey. <laughs> On Fox Soul. I want you to get a good man. He needs a good woman. I mean. <laughs> I'm so excited for our anniversary. It's the one year. <laughs> Cocktails with the queens. We've all came dressed like this. I know you can't really tell, but it's kind of a pajama party. I got on this old dingy robe because I don't sleep in pajamas. Hello, I sleep shorts. in shorts. Hey. Okay, <laughs> Selena, yes. Sip and serve every Monday night. I have on Burberry. Oh, well, of course. Oh, 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 and some yes. and some oh. diamonds. Do you sleep in your diamonds, Vivica? If I get too drunk the night before, and it's <laughs> <laughs> Show. Welcome back to the Tammy Mac Late Show on Fox Soul, where tonight the business of being black are sellouts. Joining me uh, is the author and activist, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson, also doctor of clinical psychology, Dr. Umar Johnson, and the president of the African History Network, Michael Emotep. Um, Michael, I do yes. want to talk about uh, a specific, I want to get into some cultural things that may be a sellout right now and talk about sure. that. Um, yeah. I was just looking at a video of the comedian Monique uh, kind of explaining an interview between she and uh, comedian Steve Harvey. And I think somewhere in that interview, Steve Harvey said, this is not, not about black or white, this is about green. And Monique said, and that's what I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna lose my integrity for the green. Um, when Steve Harvey went to visit President Trump, Mm -hmm. uh, the black community turned on him slightly. He, he, he got him back, but they definitely turned on him for making that visit to the president. Uh, why? Why? It, it, it would seem to me that if there is a president of the United States and you want him to do some things that are beneficial to your community, you would have to visit him at the least, right? 
Why was the black community so upset? And did that make Steve Harvey a sellout? Well, here, here's the thing. Um, I, think I, I think I remember the conversation between Steve Harvey and Monique. And uh, I can understand Monique saying, I don't want to give up my integrity for the money because in Hollywood, or as some people call it, Holly Weird, you have a lot of people who are willing to give up their integrity for the dollar and do anything for the dollar. So I can, I can understand that uh, from Monique's, Monique's perspective. Um, with it, it, it's, it's, it's tricky when you see what was interesting is that at the time that um, Steve Harvey, and I respect Steve Harvey, at the time Steve Harvey went to visit with Trump, Trump was, when it came to the African American community, Trump wasn't meeting with politicians. He wasn't meeting with people coming with agendas for the African American community in general. He's meeting with entertainers. Okay. And I, you know, I think Steve Harvey may have meant well, but I wouldn't have gone unless I'm going with a group with an agenda pushing, ish, pushing policies, pushing issues to benefit the African American community. So Steve Harvey is not a politician. I have not known him to be involved in politics in the past. He but may have. But neither is Kim Kardashian. And she visited and got things done. Well, see, here's the thing. People mention Kim Kardashian, but they don't mention the two African-American female attorneys behind her who were doing the work, who were doing the legal work. See, she, she, see, Trump wanted to photo out with her. It was two African-American women who are our attorneys during the legal work. OK, they were the ones doing the groundwork, the grunt work. So oftentimes when they talk about a Kim Kardashian and you see the photo in the White House with Trump and things like this, they leave the sisters out who are really doing the work, who are the, who are the attorneys. Well, I, I but, think but, I'm speaking specifically of the optics of it all. It seemed as if Kim Kardashian could go to Trump and ask for some things and get it done. And perhaps it was uh, perhaps it was part of the tactic. So, to, to have the two black girls not really be recognized in order to, to make the accomplishment. I don't know the answer so, to that. So what with uh, she got uh, some uh, com uh, some uh, commutations. Alice Johnson was one of them. Right. Got a got a commutation for. It, right. OK. We're happy that she got out. But she was never but, but, considered a sellout. Steve Harvey was. Right. Right. Well, well, who you mean Kim Kardashian was never considered right. a sellout? Right. Well, Kim, she's white. Okay. Kim Kardashian is white. Last time I checked, I know she yeah, likes black yeah. men, but she's white. Well, she's definitely not <laughs> black. Yeah. 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 So they're not going to call her a sellout. No, no. But I think it, uh, I saw an interview that Steve Harvey did with D.L. Hughley. And he, and he said if he had known the type of backlash she was going to get, he would not have gone to meet with Trump. It's, and also the backlash his family received. OK, but once again, if you're going to go meet with somebody like that, Trump, whoever you're going to meet with that, you don't want to go as an individual. You want to go with a group that has an agenda to empower African-Americans as opposed to because Trump, he likes to be Trump likes to be seen with black entertainers, black hip hop artists. OK, his name was mentioned. Uh, I, I can't remember something like a hundred times or 200 times over the course of 20 years, something like that in hip hop songs. OK, mm -hmm. so Trump liked to be around that. All right. And use those photo ops. So, you know, we have to be we have to be smarter than that. Dr. Omar, Michael says he wouldn't have visited Trump. I'm curious to know, would you have? Yes, I would have. It is important that we as African people always speak truth to power when given an opportunity. I didn't have an issue with black people meeting with President Trump. But what I did have an issue with, as brother, as brother Michael is saying, is who we allowed to meet with President Trump. Steve Harvey has no history of political activism in the black community. Steve Harvey has no history of speaking up to the white power structure on behalf of black people. So although I would have had no problem with a black activist or organizer meeting with President Trump, I did have a problem with black celebrities meeting with President Trump. That was the issue. And would as you it consider relates them to Kim sellouts? Say that again. Would you consider them sellouts? Who? Uh, Steve Harvey and um, there's another one I'm thinking of. But I, uh, I wouldn't consider Steve Harvey 
a sellout as strictly as I would consider a Shaquille O'Neal, a Charles Barkley, and a Kendrick Perkins sellout. And the reason I'm drawing a distinction is whenever Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley, and Kendrick Perkins open their mouth on issues involving Black people, they always take the side of the white power structure. Whereas with Steve Harvey, I have seen some attempts by him to defend the integrity of Black people. It's not often. I'm not even going to say it's acceptable, but there is levels to the coon kingdom. There's levels to the coon kingdom. So even though they are all sellouts, you have your grade A coons like Jesse Lee Peterson and Charles Barkley. And then you have your grade B coons, which would be like a Kendrick Perkins and a Shaq. And then you have your grade C coons, which would be like a Steve Harvey. So you, there's you levels the to the category. coon kingdom. Say again. But you do put him in the coon kingdom. I would put Steve Harvey in the coon kingdom, but he wouldn't be grade A like Jesse Lee Peterson and Charles Barkley. And yes. the other thing I wanted to say quickly, Tammy, okay. with Kim Kardashian, that was a perfect example of racism on the part of the white power structure who says, I would rather hear a white woman articulate the issues of incarcerated black females. Now you have hundreds of black women who fight for the liberation of incarcerated sisters every day. I can run off organizations all day long, but instead of meeting with black women who are in the trenches doing the work, we are instead gonna let a privileged white woman articulate the issues for black people. And Sister Tammy, that was dangerous that black women supported Kim Kardashian being their mouthpiece, because what it does is it reinforces an old stereotype that black people are not intellectually sound enough to articulate their own issues and that they need a white person to do it. We should never celebrate a white person being selected to represent our issues. It should always be someone who looks like us. That should be a part of the code. Oh, hey, hey, that should be Pat part of the code. Yeah. You Go know, ahead, Michael. Ms. Uh, Ms. Jesse, Ms. we're coming just, right to you. Go ahead, just, Michael. Just a quick clarification. I didn't say I wouldn't go to meet with Trump. I said I wouldn't go by myself. I would go with a group of people who, a group of African Americans who have Absolutely. a political agenda, who have yeah. an agenda to, to get something for, for our people. I wouldn't just go by myself and I wouldn't go for a photo op. Absolutely. Uh, Reverend Jesse. Yes. You're, you're a part of the Coon Kingdom, he says. <laughs> That's right. You know, you just heard the voice of a beta male. That made no sense of what doc the doctor said and what Michael said. Um, it's sad to see that most black people believe that they're all the same because of their color. They're not looking at them, their, their true self. They are a spirit created in the image of God. And they don't know that. They're going by colors. And so they're all in the same pot headed down to the road to destruction. Uh, uh, Reverend Jesse, uh, I want to ask you. Donald Trump, uh, Donald Reverend Trump Jesse, was I the best thing you. that ever happened to black Americans because Donald Trump did not see colors. He would not, he saw colors, but he wasn't into the color thing. He was into what is right. And that's why he was able to help black people more so than any other president that we have had in the last, I don't know how many years, right? Obama was the worst, by the way, but Donald Trump was the best. I call him the great white hope because he made America great again. Black people went to work. They started uh, uh, buying homes and starting families and things like that because of Donald Trump. But these people like Dr. Umar and, and, and Michael, they're into their color. They're in a fallen state. They're weak males and they cannot see. They can't see that Donald Trump was a, a man of God. He was a conservative, <coughs> Christian, straight white man who loved what's right. And he wasn't into the color. That's why Kanye West and other black men and women who met with uh, the president, they respected him because he was not into color. He gave black university more money than anybody else. And all they did was misuse it. He did more to help the blacks than anyone else. We're going to take a quick <laughs> break and okay. come right back on the Tammy McLeod show on Fox Soul. Okay. I'm just like, oh my God, my third grader needs a training bra. What the hell is going on? Later with Leon. I need some counseling. 
I never wore a training bra. When I was eight, I wore a bra, a grown people bra. Every Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Me and my mother probably was wearing the same bra when I was eight. <laughs> On Fox Soul. Oh yeah, me and my mama was both going to the store called Bra World and getting bra. Real bra world. Clothes. Spending time outdoors has never felt more valuable. Whether it's exploring nature or relaxing in your yard, let's do it responsibly. Before going out, check for closures and fire restrictions. Practice social distancing, even when outside and on the trail. Back at home with burning yard debris, keep your pile small. And no matter where you are, be sure to properly extinguish any outdoor fire. Drown, stir, drown, feel. We're all in this together. Help keep our safe places safe. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Snoop Dogg teases that he may have allegedly smoked with President Obama. T-G-I-F. If he did smoke with Obama at all, his ass won't smoke with him again, because Michelle don't appreciate this. He's not getting invited to the house no more. Every Friday night. You can just look at Obama and you know he gets down. He was like, man, Snoop, what you got? on Fox Soul. I can hear them old senators now, and oh, Obama was smoking reefer with the rappers. <laughs> Welcome back to the Tammy McLeod Show on Fox Soul. Tonight, the business of being black is sell out. Sell <laughs> out. Um, I, I want to take something really, really basic and ask if it's a sellout perspective. Uh, working for a white company, is that a sellout perspective, Michael? Uh, can, can I address what I was going to say before the break right quick Absolutely. and go to that question? So uh, a lot of people like to talk about the money that, and they say Donald Trump gave to HBCUs. Okay, that was representative of Alma Adams' bill. OK, that bill passed. But another black woman that doesn't get credit. White people take the credit for what she did. That bill that bill passed the House of Representatives. That bill. Please, sir, don't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you. Don't make that, that bill passed the House of Representatives. It passed the U.S. Senate. It had a veto proof majority in both the House and the Senate, which means even if Trump vetoed the bill, the Congress would have overrode his veto and it still would have become law. OK, so pe some pe some people want to give Trump all the credit for that. That was her bill. And she gets no credit for that. It um, was so, bill. It was going to pass through anyway. At the, it, it, not only was it going to pass, it had a veto proof majority. So regardless of what he did, it was still going to become law. Um, going to work for uh, white people. Uh, I've worked for uh, white corporations. I work for African-American owned businesses. Somebody who's trying to take care of their family, be responsible, take care of their family. If they work for a white corporation you know, or a white company or something like that, I don't look at them, okay, you're a sellout because you work for a white company. Now, if they are, um, I don't want to use certain terms, if they are uh, putting on a menstrual show at work, see, that's something different, okay? You can work for a white company but not put on a menstrual show. It, but um, yeah, I, I, just because somebody works for a white corporation, the other thing is when we look at these corporations, General Motors, I live here in Detroit. Live in Detroit almost 50 years. I'll be 50 in June. General Motors, Ford, Chrysler. Uh, the money we spent on GM cars, all that stuff, we paid for all those jobs. So as far as I'm concerned, we should have we should have jobs at all different levels of these companies that we spend money with. But bring that money back to the African American community. You guys need to and, stop and, begging, and, man. And, and, stop and bring, begging. bring 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 America that money back to the black please, people. Please, sir, don't please, sir, don't interrupt. Talk about yeah, bring, 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 yield, bring, yield, bring, yield, bring, yield, Jesse. Bring, Michael, stop begging. Bring, bring bring that money back to the African American stop community. Stop begging, Michael. And 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 and, and you 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 stop like that money to help empower African American-owned businesses also. Okay? Michael, men don't beg. Stop doing that. Please, please, please. 
was please, just... please, sir, don't don't interrupt me. Man, <laughs> man, man. I, I, I'm, I'm holding back on you because I respect my elders, but I, I stop begging, you, Michael. What you, men do? I'm not begging. Men make I'm not begging. things happen. They don't <laughs> beg. They don't blame. Jesse. Jesse, don't you wouldn't know a man if you met one. They don't want reparations. They made Jesse. their way. The black man and my when I was growing up, they made their way. They didn't beg the white man for anything because they it's didn't. It's not begging. It's not begging white people. Wait a second. White men were you, you, superior. If you to go them. back to you, black if you look men, at the Homestead Act of 1862, that was a massive land you, giveaway of 245 men million acres of land you, Michael, that mostly went begging. to white people. Okay, stop if you want to, if you want to, if you want to talk about how white people got over in this country. It's by take. It was by stealing the land, That's reallocating the land, enslaving African people not for two hundred forty six years. Those are lies, passing laws, pa passing laws that disenfranchised us, locked us out of voting. Then after slave, then after the Civil War and after Reconstruction, eighteen seventy seven. Because I always notice black conservatives. Excuses. I always notice black conservatives is two things stop you don't want to talk about. One, you don't want to talk about man. the Compromise of eighteen seventy. No, you interrupted me. Are you doing? You making you. excuses? No, no, no. Slow down. You sound like a female. Slow down. I know. I, I know. I, 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 I know you. I know you catering to the white people that donate to your show. But there's two things that black Republicans don't want to talk. And I'm not against black Republicans. I have friends that are black Republicans. You don't want to talk about the compromise of 1877. Oh, which was the compromise between the Republicans and the Democrats, and and the Republicans agreed to remove the Union troops out of the South. That reinstituted the Jim, that instituted hard, Jim Crow man. laws, and the and the Union troops were protecting the rights of the newly freed slaves to a certain extent because that's what the Democrats wanted. And you don't want to talk about the Lily White movement in 1928, which was the effort of Republicans to push African Americans out of the Republican Party and get Herbert Hoover elected as president in 1928. Now, if you want to have that conversation, we can have that conversation. It's not going to turn out the way you think it's going to turn. Out. Michael, it's time to stop asking for freebies. I understand the freebies. women doing that because. You have, you have women the Farmers Home man. Association, 1930. I understand why women are doing it, but because women, you, you, hold on, Michael, are you going to talk about the twenty-six billion dollars that hold white on, farmers man. got from the Trump administration, and Michael. black farmers got one tenth of one percent freebies? Michael, I understand the well, women I know. doing Jesse, that because that is a good question. That, that is, he but doesn't Jesse, want to deal with that. Jesse, that but, is a good question. So let's let's answer that question. You say that black people want freebies, but Michael just uh, talked about a huge freebie for the white farmers. Are, are we not going to? We're not, we're just going to gloss past that. There were black farmers who got money too. As they got one tenth fact, of one percent of 26 hold, hold billion on, Michael, dollars. Me the question. Whoa, 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 hold, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Hey, they got hold one on, tenth man. of one percent of Michael, 26 billion. They got the 20.8 million dollars. Uh, Tammy, as I was saying, there were, uh, uh, there were black people who received the money too. And what Michael is talking about happened over a hundred years ago or so. And those things, those about days, 2020 be, under those Trump. days no, that are behind us. Year. That what, just happened last year, Reverend Jesse, where you been? There were black people who received it last year too, but you, you're not hearing about that. But what I want to tell you, Tammy, <laughs> it's time off for hmm. black people to stop begging. I'm sick of it. We can make our own way. Black people can make our their own way if they get up and do it. it. It's um, it's that's why we have to overcome this cultural thing because blacks who are into their culture, they think that all blacks are just like them, begging and blaming and whining and talking about 150 years ago and all that. Why not live now? The blacks didn't do that when I was growing up, especially black men. They need to stop begging for freebies. America is an amazing place, right? And whatever you want to do in this country, you can do it. You can make Hold it. Oh, that thought. Okay. okay. Yes, this, that is true. That is so true. I'll have to agree with you on that, Reverend Jesse. Whatever you want to do in this country, you can do. Yeah. Um, Dr. Umar, earlier you talked about uh, you know, black men shouldn't date white women. Frederick Douglass was labeled a turncoat by many African-Americans because he married a, a, a white woman. Uh, he was also criticized for his willingness to work with slave owners to seek um, a peaceful end to slavery. So what are your thoughts on that? Was Frederick <clears throat> Douglass a sellout? Let me take the, the second point first, that <laughs> Frederick Douglass was willing to work with slave owners to bring a peaceful close to slavery. That is incorrect. Frederick Douglass had always maintained that slavery would not end except with blood. If that there was any collaboration with slave owners, it was in discussion 
because Frederick Douglass at one time worked with William Lloyd Garrison, who used moral persuasion as the primary weapon to end slavery. Frederick Douglass fell out with him because he knew that trying to convince white people that owning black people was morally wrong was not going to end the institution of slavery. So whoever made that comment was incorrect. Now, let's go to the first point that his second wife was a white woman who he married at a very old age. Was it acceptable? Not to me at all. But what bothers me and what I do consider to be another act of racism and discrimination against black women is the fact that Anna Murray Douglas, who was the mother of all five of his children and his wife for nearly 50 years until she died of illness, who helped him escape from slavery to freedom, who came up with the escape plan, who made the escape outfit, who created the false uh, free slave paper that he used to pass from Maryland through Pennsylvania and up to New York, she never gets mentioned. She never gets mentioned. We always skip over Anna Murray Douglas, his lifetime partner for the white woman he, he, who he married just a few years away from the grave himself. I That's don't not accept even it. Important. I don't accept it, Sister Tammy, but, but can we please show respect to it's Queen Mother Anna important. Murray Douglas? She is entitled to respect and black people have to stop skipping over his real wife for the woman he spent the last few years of his life with. Tammy, let me tell you this about so, the black so, farmers. Uh, so do you farmers think, oh, are getting ahead, a okay. huge freebie from the USDA today, right? According to the Washington Post, five billion of Biden's stimulus package is going to benefit black farmers, but they still going to be begging. It's not going to satisfy them because it's not the lack of material things that blacks are having a problem with. It's the lack of more character. Blacks are immoral, not all but most. And We're going to take a quick break. We'll come right back on the Tammy McLeod show on Fox Soul. I'm just like, oh my God, my third grader needs a training bra. What the hell is going on? Later with Leon. I need some counseling. I never wore a training bra. When I was eight, I wore a bra, a grown people bra. Every Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Me and my mother probably was wearing the same bra when I was eight. <laughs> on Fox Soul. Oh yeah, me and my mama <laughs> was both going to the store called Bra World and getting bra. <laughs> bra World. <laughs> 145 over 92. 180 over 111. I had a heart attack and a cardiac arrest and then a stroke. Your blood pressure numbers could change your life. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Lowering your high blood pressure could save you from a heart attack or stroke. If you've stopped your treatment plan, restart it or talk to your doctor about creating one that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. Now I'm, you know, trying to get better, stronger than ever. Anytime they're playing music downstairs, it's, it's loud. I go downstairs, see what they're doing, see what music they're doing, see what they're dancing to. I go play piano downstairs, they come get involved. Leah has a drum set beside it, banging that. Any music, uh, that's what they do. Dog teases that he may have allegedly smoked with President Obama. T G I F. If he did smoke with Obama at all, his ass won't smoke with him again. Cause Michelle don't appreciate this. He's not getting invited to the house no more. Every Friday night, you can just look at Obama and you know he gets down. He was like, "Man, Snoop, what you got?" On Fox Soul. I can hear them old senators now, and oh, Obama was smoking reefer with the rappers. <laughs> Welcome back to the Tammy McLeod Show on Fox Soul. I want to thank my guests, uh, Michael Imotep and uh, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson and Dr. Umar Johnson. Michael, I want to talk about uh, your podcast, the African History Network. What is that all about? The African History Network show. Uh, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on six days a week. We focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. We deal with current events, politics, history, uh, a number of different things. People can visit my website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com for more information. 
Also, there's information on my website about my uh, nine-week uh, online course that I teach on Saturdays, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, Understanding the Transatlantic Slave Trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And uh, follow me on my Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and my YouTube, YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Dr. Umar, what's going on with the school? Uh, where can we contribute? What, uh, can you tell us about it or is there something else you'd rather discuss tonight? Oh, that's fine. Uh, brothers and sisters who want to su uh, support the renovation efforts at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy can do so on the cash app at dollar sign FDMG school. I repeat on the cash app dollar sign FDMG school. Also on PayPal at paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. I will also be uh, speaking in Las Vegas on the 14th of May, Oakland the 15th of May, Los Angeles the 16th of May, Palm Springs the 22nd of May, South Bend, Indiana the 23rd, Fayetteville, North Carolina, June 4th, Statesville, North Carolina, June 6th, Juneteenth, Atlanta on the 19th, Detroit, Michigan Preschool Educators Conference, June the 18th, and Louisville, Kentucky, Marcus Garvey birthday celebration on August the 14th. Brothers and sisters want to reach me, drumarjohnson.com or 215-989-9858. You know your whole schedule, your whole tour by heart. I, I don't even know. Were you reading that, office? How do you know that? Uh, you have like to that? know it by heart. Don't forget Hartford, Connecticut, June 26th, Nashville, Tennessee, July 17th. Okay. I think I'm going to have to meet you in LA since that's where I am. So I'll. Yes, ma'am. And they can order the new book as well at drumarjohnson.com. Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson, I know you have a lot going on. Tell us about your book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. Where well, can we get it? Well, for 31 years, I, I started an organization called Bond, the Brotherhood Organization of a New Destiny. And we are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man, turning men and women back to God. And, and we tutor, we counsel. I have a daily radio show, podcast show at uh, jessaleepeterson.com. And they can check out the nonprofit at rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com. And uh, we are having our uh, bond men's conference down in Orlando, Florida, and uh, August 14th for men only. So people can go to rebuildingtheman.com and check that out. The book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of uh, Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. And I write about what happens if you don't have a father to guide you. And what and and I write about Barack Obama, Jesse Jackson, and all those guys. And one thing they, they had in common, and they had no fathers. So they grew up angry. They grew up uh, without the image of their father, but the image of their mothers. And that's why they don't know how to guide men and women in the right way to go. It is an amazing book. It tells you how to overcome. You can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND, B-O-N-D. And we also, I started a, a Entrepreneur Academy where we were showing young men how to start businesses. And it's amazing. And I had to start a credit union because a lot of these guys, their credit was uh, destroyed by their mothers when they were growing up, so they couldn't get credit. Ooh, okay, I'm, I gotta stop you there. We're running out of time. Uh, okay, credit, check out the credit My credit, credit was destroyed by my father. Let me just put it there. Let me just put that out there. Uh, to, and by the way, I have the perfect credit right now as a woman. So go let me put that out there too. I want to thank Dr. The Omar Johnson and I want to thank Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson and also Michael and Motep for joining me tonight on the Tammy Mac Late Show. Until tomorrow, everybody, it's a blessing to be in your box. Bye, y'all. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you.